This week, Lauren shares her personal journey of loss, which led to finding her purpose. We discuss somatic therapy, the importance of listening to your body, and processing emotions after a traumatic loss. This episode includes discussions about mental health issues, suicide, and the loss of a family member due to cancer. It includes conversations about illness and end of life experiences, which may not be suitable for all listeners. I'm your host, Ashanka, and you're listening to That Was The Moment I Lost A Part Of Myself and Found My Purpose. My guest today is Lauren. Lauren is 29 and lives in Sydney with her husband, Andrew, and their pup, Katie. She's a somatic practitioner and space holder and is currently completing a mind-body practitioner certification with the goal to help people find their true selves and live their most authentic lives. Um, thank you so much for being here today, Lauren. Really appreciate your time. Oh, no, thank you so much for having me. So excited to be here. Amazing. Um, do you want to tell me about what life was like before your moment? Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think for anyone in their 20s, you know that the 20s are a little bit, they're kind of like the dress rehearsal for life. You know, it's kind of like that, where am I? You know, what am I doing? Um, who am I? Um, and, you know, my early 20s were just, you know, jumping through different jobs, different industries, studying. Um, I was in the film industry for a really long time um, and theatre and studied acting. And um, I was a makeup artist for film and television and, you know, wasn't 100 percent there with it. It wasn't sitting quite right. It, it was all fun and games and really wonderful and exciting. But, it, you know, there's something in you going on. Oh, is this me you know um and yeah I mean you kind of have you kind of go through these moments throughout your life I think but um sometimes people go through I mean I had like what I call a banner year you know where just kind of everything kind of went wrong um and I was about 24 and I'd lost a friend um unfortunately to suicide which was devastating and I just ended a relationship that was 10 years long um and then my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer which was the biggest shock of all um so being 24 and kind of also not knowing who you are and at the time I was in the in a sales job um for a tech company and yeah it was it was a really turbulent time and and I always looked back and thought that was like the worst year you know it couldn't get any worse than that and you always say that and you know the, the universe laughs and <laughs> and says, no, "Actually, I can, I can do, I can do better. <laughs> I can do better. Just do right." Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, you know, we got through that, and and thankfully, my mum, you know, she went through um, just the most strong, independent, incredible woman, um, and she went through, you know, all the treatments, chemo, radiation vasectomy all the things you do and, and she had an incredible place in Sydney we were really really lucky um and yeah so that kind of went away and um life was pretty good and she was on preventative treatment at the time for, for a couple of years which was um you know giving her the best chance at sort of getting into remission completely and and things were looking good and and we sort of went back to living which was kind of nice because for her especially she was the biggest party animal um yeah. so it was it was really nice to sort of get into that space and then um it wasn't until I mean I met I met my husband in 2020 during COVID don't ask me how I did that but I figured <laughs> it out <laughs> and, um, and yeah so we we got engaged sort of quite early within about a year and um it was about February 2022 so last February last year that um unfortunately she had had a seizure and we obviously went straight into hospital and you know they're treating it like a stroke and all those things as you do and and then we found out it was actually the the cancer had gone to the brain and, and she had two large brain tumors um which was i think a huge shock um for everyone and you know you kind of you're in that moment thinking is this it, you know, are you going to get out of this? When's this going to, like, is this going to happen? It's going to happen, but when is it going to happen? Yeah. And you kind of, a part of you is going, no, 
you don't want to believe it, you know? And you're kind of sitting there and, and you go through the motions and you take it all in and, and you, you know, it's interesting because, I mean, I heard recently, you know, you don't know anything in your 20s because you don't have a gut to listen to yet. <laughs> and I think that's quite accurate, especially in these moments. Because, you know, I think there was this gut feeling of going, okay, uh, this might be it. You know, this this might be sort of the beginning of the end and, and you don't want to believe it. Um, and she was just incredibly brave um, and had, she had brain surgery that went on for nine hours, I think it was, and she woke up paralysed on her left side so she couldn't walk. And at this point, I'm still working for a company and it's crazy stressful. And, um, you know, we were we were in hospital with her nonstop um, every single day for about two to three months there while she was recovering and wondering, is she going to walk again? And knowing her, we, we knew that she would. Um, it was it was going to be a journey, but we knew she would. But it had to be her way, of course. Um, bless her. And, uh, and, yeah, so it was a really difficult time, I think, with COVID as well, um, mm -hmm. how understaffed the hospitals were and, you know, how much as a family and me and my dad, you know, we had to go in and and you know, do some of the things that maybe the nurses would do, like feeding and, you know, helping her to the bathroom and, and you know, all the things that just you would do, you know, if you were able to. And um, so that was really, really quite stressful. And she said to me, you know, I'm not staying in here anymore. And she still hadn't learned how to walk yet. And she got to a point where she just said, I've got to get out of here, you know, and I'm coming home. And I went, okay, well, if you're going to do that, then you're going to need the help. Yeah. And so I decided, I, you know, I thought, I said, I'm going to quit this job because it means nothing in the grand scheme of things, you know, and it's still not what I really wanted to do, being a very creative person. And, um, yeah, so so I quit and I'm so grateful. You know, I have my husband who is just so incredibly supportive of that decision to to be there for my mom at the time and, and my family. And, um yeah, so he, he was at home and he ended up, you know, we ended up getting her walking again. It was quite incredible because she did most of it without any rehab and, and just did it herself. And and it was really so inspiring to see um, someone with that much determination and, and will to to get back to moving again. And it wasn't, you know, the same, you know, as it once was, but she was moving and she was there and, and it was just so incredible. And, you know, the, the doctor, um, were absolutely amazing giving her every possible chance to you know live a full life again and, and get her on as many treatments as possible um the thing is is i think throughout that year what was so um confronting and sort of mind-boggling was the the you know my mom was someone who had such high anxiety when it came to medical procedures and things and um, especially with with anything to do with the brain, you know, um, it, it can be quite overwhelming, especially if you have something like claustrophobia and she was just so anxious. She was like, I'm more anxious of the treatment than I am of actually being sick, you know. It's like it just didn't add up and I'm going, you've got to do it, you know. And and so she, um, yeah, so she, she, she went through it with so much bravery and so much, determination and she always said you know I'm not doing it for me I'm doing it for you guys and we kept going no I'm do it for <laughs> you you know um but what kind of blew my mind was the fact that you know as wonderful as these physicians were um you know when you're in that world of cancer treatment when you're in that world of any kind of chronic or terminal illness that's you know being treated so aggressively these doctors as wonderful as they are at looking at the physical side of things um, sometimes it's not always taken into account to look at things from a more holistic perspective looking at the entire body and looking at the mind and the anxiety and how much the brain and the emotions play on that physical journey um, and I couldn't quite understand it I just couldn't I just couldn't get it so 
you know, that that kind of opened my mind and also just dealing with the trauma and, and the anxiety of the whole entire year, you know, I, I was I opened my mind to to working with um a somatic therapist and that um was really eye opening and sort of started to set me on this path of, of self healing and looking at how how um how important emotions and the mind body connection you know can be um, for your entire well-being so yeah that's kind of where i was leading up to to that moment um yeah yeah it was it was quite a journey she sounds like such an amazing strong woman um you know just yeah deter- you use determination a few times but that was the word that was going you know going on in my mind as well like determined 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 um that's that's pretty amazing yeah um, she's, she was next level <laughs> it was quite, it's really inspiring it's really inspiring it, it really was yeah it was really yeah. inspiring to see. yeah and so yeah. i guess now we we come to to you know the moment um mm. the moment yeah it was i mean it, it was really fascinating because throughout that whole time you know you i wasn't working and i think you know, when you're in a society like we are, where there is so much value placed on what you do in your everyday life and the money that you yeah. make and, oh, you know, the title, the, the, the title. title, exactly the <laughs> yes. title. And the number one question we all get asked as well, you know, is, you know, when you meet someone else, so what do you do? What do you do? What you do you know, do? what do you do? Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, all of that. And, and I think for me, it was always just like in that year, it was really kind of hard to answer those questions because it's like, well, I don't really want to go into the whole, oh, my mum got sick and this is why I'm not working and da 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 da, da you know. Yeah. And so it was it was really difficult. And, um, yeah, so the moment kind of, the, the moment came to me in the worst moment. So it was, it was such a, it was such a, pivotal and unique thing and so profound and it's something that I will always hold with me and it was my mum early in April started to get worse and we didn't know why and she became completely paralyzed at this point and we it was like round the clock care with me and my family caring for her um and she couldn't move and we just didn't understand the doctors didn't understand why and we eventually ended up putting into hospital and trying to get an answer going what what is going on and you know I remember in my gut thinking this may be it this may be sort of the end of it all and and I was you know one part of you was like holding on completely going no (laughs) no 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 no. can't be can't be can't be look at her you know and then the other half is kind of a part of me was like she can't do this anymore you know it's just you get to a point where you're looking at this person you absolutely love and admire and 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 you go it's just not fair to be living in a body that's just not going to give you exactly what you need you know this isn't living and so you were you know there was that sort of feeling of being torn and um we we, she you know she she went and did all these tests and I remember sitting in my bedroom and it was, um, it was, a, I think it was a Sunday morning and my dad said, you know, uh, the doctors are going to get back to us with what's going on. And, and so I was sort of waiting and I could just feel it in that gut feeling like just going, no, nah. you know, something's, something's going to happen here. Um, and we got the call and in that moment, my dad said, yeah, the, the cancer's gone to, to the, um lining of the brain and she's not going to get any better and and this is it and in that moment which was probably one of the worst moments you know you could have um i remember looking at my husband after i got off the phone and i just said i know what i'm gonna do i know what i'm gonna do with my life and i just said i'm gonna i'm gonna be a somatic therapist i need to help people going through this and I just said, I don't want another person to go through what she went through in in a way of not having that emotional support, not having that emotional understanding and that holistic approach to going through treatment and the trauma of that. And I said, you know, not just for people who are unwell or going through treatment, but 
for carers and for people who have extremely high stress jobs, you know, the paramedics that came and got her, I looked at them and went, how do you do this job? Like you are such a special person to be able to do this job. Um, so yeah, that was, that was the moment I knew. I just went for the first time in my life, I just knew. And it was almost as if she was giving me that, well, there you go. That's what you're going to do now, you know, and that's where you're meant to be and that's how you're going to do it. And, and if it weren't for that experience, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here. And I've honestly never felt so, uh, felt so grounded in doing something, you know, and so like excited. Um, and so, yeah, it was a, it was a really beautiful moment as heartbreaking as it was and horrible. It was also kind of wonderful because, you know, you, you, I look back on it and just thought, well, it had to happen that way. And I'm really grateful for it in a way, you know? So yeah, it, it was, um, it was very big. That gave me um, that gave me goosebumps. And I think it's amazing how, yeah. Had your mum not gotten sick, would you even know what a somatic yeah. um, practitioner was? You know, um, mm. and you know, we talked about the universe before, and um, I, I guess these are the the fun games that the universe plays with us. Um, and you know, in in that moment where you had clarity of what you wanted to do. Um, was there any doubt or were you just like 100% certain? Do you remember how you were feeling? I was 100% certain. Um, it was such a weird mix of emotions, especially as, you know, the days following that and sort of waiting for her to, to pass and wondering when that was going to happen. It was, it was so, um, it was so strange and there was a you know there was a huge sense of guilt there as well which i think is really natural because it you know you don't want to lose someone yeah. and you don't want to move on with your life and you don't want to you know you feel guilty for doing that when they're in this position you know and but at the same time a part of me is you know going this is possibly the best thing for her because there was no other way out and i definitely knew in that moment and and i think it came from like i started working with my somatic therapist sarah who was just a godsend this woman is just one of the most incredible people i've ever met and um has such a, a way for holding space for people and understanding without judgment and just connecting you in ways to your body you never experienced you've never experienced you never thought was possible and um throughout that journey you know she was saying to me oh I think this is something you should do and I kept going no 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 I'm caring for my mom I'm caring for all these people I, I don't have the capacity to care for anyone else you know I can barely I barely have the time and energy to put into myself let alone thinking about doing a career that's going to end in just giving my time and space and energy to other people and she was like, okay, we'll see how you feel. And she just, she kept laughing about it because every time she'd ask, I'd just say no. <laughs> and then I remember she called me and she said, you know, how's it going with your mum? And I said, oh, she's not going to make it. Um, and she just, you know, started, I think she was crying and was so upset for me. And I said, and I remember distinctly saying, but I, fi I found something else. I said, something else has come up and this is what I'm going to do. And she was so happy because it was just that, it was like an aha moment, you know, it was finally for her as well going, oh, you finally clicked. And it, you know, going, <laughs> if you just oh, listened to me, you just listen to me earlier, you know, and she was so right. And, and um, yeah, so it was, there was no doubt in my mind, this is where I'm meant to be. It's what I'm meant to do. I have no idea where to start how yeah. to get there um a part of me is still figuring that out but it's it's incredible because i'm just i'm going i can now care for people and it's like i have the space and the energy to do that you know and i'm tell, doing tell it for her that's that's really amazing um to to have i guess this um this purpose come out of something so tragic yeah um, sad um, now tell me a bit more about um, somatic therapy and, you know, what, is that, what does that involve? Yeah, well, somatic therapy, well, somatic, so the word soma, it means the body. Um, so it, it's essentially just looking at 
practical ways and tools to connect the mind and the body together. I'm sure a lot of us have done talk therapy, psychotherapy, which is absolutely incredible. And I think um, is a fantastic way to start for someone who has never done, you know, any kind of therapy before. Um, And I did that for a very long time. And you know, battling with anxiety and depression and, and whatnot. And, and it was really helpful. It just didn't, I'm a very practical person. I'm a very like, okay, give me, some, give me a list of things to do. Like, mm-hmm. let's go and get it done, you know, um, instead of just talking and walking away and going, okay, well, what do I do now? You know, I've spoken about all of this, but there's nothing tangible to 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 work from and so somatic therapy is kind of giving you those tools to be able to connect the mind and the body together and actually looking at the power of the brain and the mind um in relation to the the body itself so how certain emotions can be trapped within the body how your you know the way in which you process emotions can come out in physical things um there are a lot of studies recently which are showing that um, a lot of chronic illnesses, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, and so on, um, can be stemmed from just not so much a suppression, but just the inability to correctly process um, emotions, trauma, or experiences that you know are, are within you and are a part of you, and and the brain has just so much power in connecting these molecules and and connecting the neurons to to send these firing experiences through the body and so what i love about somatic therapy is that it actually gives you practical tools so for instance guided meditation um feeling into the senses of your body and to understand you know where is this emotion sitting right now and, and how is that feeling and you know, um, not being afraid to go into that emotion mm. and, and and knowing you're in a safe space. The reason I use the term space holder is because I want people to feel like they are being held. I'm not, you know, I, I, as a practitioner, I don't think it is so much our job to fix as it is to hold them in safety and to allow them to experience fully all of their emotions and all of their trauma and, and work with them on that and hold their hand through it because we, every single person on this planet, I honestly believe have the ability to do all of it themselves. Um, you know, once we just have, have the right framework to work in and have practical things, you know, and a lot of it, you know, a lot of somatic therapists and things like they kind of look at it from a point of view of self care. And everyone thinks, oh, just get a facial, you'll be right, you know. <laughs> and it's like, sure, you know, that that's a part of it, I guess. But I, I do think that, you know, there are things like just taking time to sit and breathe in a space um, is, a, is an act of self-care. And, and the word no, you know, and especially for women, that's just a huge, that's a whole Absolutely. other, you know, kettle mm-hmm. of fish. Like it's, you know, a lot of women that I'm working with, they have, and I'm still learning it, you know, the concept that the word no is actually a full sentence. Like that, that can, (laughs) no, you know, it doesn't have to be a, there doesn't doesn't have have to be a but. (laughs) Exactly. There doesn't have to be a but, um, you know, or because or any justification, you know, it's just, you know, protecting yourself and setting those boundaries is an act of self care and, and learning how to do that and, and not be afraid and, and processing stressful experiences through setting those boundaries. So it's a, it's an interesting framework, somatic therapy. It, it can involve so many things from art, you know, making through to dance and yoga, through to getting a massage or, you know, guided meditation and embodiment. Um, there are so many different tools that we use and, um, yeah it's just it's i find it just really fascinating i always think you know if my mom had that to process some of the trauma that she had throughout her life i often wonder if she would be still here and i often wonder you know would it have saved her from going through a sickness Mm. so debilitating i mean i personally don't know if you know built up trauma and anger and emotions can cause things like cancer i mean there are some studies out there that say that um yeah. I'm not here to say that that's definitely the case, but I do think yes. that the way in which we hold ourselves and, and acknowledge what we feel and the connection it has to our physical body um, is extremely important. Um, I do think that it does have a huge impact. And so, yeah, it, that's kind of what got me there is going, well, she needed it. 
you know yeah. and I, I knew someone that went through so much and was just so incredibly brave and so incredibly determined in living um and if only she had some of these tools you know at her disposal um in her younger years or in even in the later years before she passed you know i i wonder you know what would have happened so you know it, it's gonna it, it really does feel like an honor to be able to step into that role to to hold space with people and and hope that i'm able to help even if i just help one person on this planet i know that i've done my job so <laughs> Yeah. that's that's what's exciting about it I guess yeah yeah I love that in some of the training that I've done uh, I learned that we store trauma in our body when we use the word trauma a lot of people think big trauma like rape or you know yeah m- big illness mm. or car accident or whatever but being bullied at school is a trauma you know, yeah. being being called names is a trauma. So I, I always say big T, little T, but it's still a T. Yes, right? I love that. Yeah, it's that's still a, a really tea. good way to put at it. Yeah. Um, and we store that in our in our bodies, and if we are never, and sometimes we don't even know we're storing it, and we just we hold on to it, and it goes into different areas of us, and um sometimes it needs to escape and the way it escapes is through different ailments uh, because it, it wants to, it wants to be released. And Absolutely. yeah, the somatic work, um, I've done a lot of breath work with some amazing facilitators. And um, I remember my first breath work session. I don't know what was being released, but just my body shook in a way that it's never shook before. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, I literally coming out of that meditation, I felt, I felt lighter. And within weeks I had, I started losing weight because yeah. I felt like my body was like, oh, you don't need to hold on to this trauma, this anymore. And for days I pondered, what was the trauma? And again, because you think trauma has to be huge. So I, I just had to process and it took me, took me a little while to, to work out you know, what I was processing. My amazing friend who's the facilitator, he just kind of said, does it matter? You've released it. Does it, yeah, you know, does, do you have to know what it is? You've released it. So, mm. and that's the other part of it. Like everything gets stored in our subconscious. So, you know, we walk around with these traumas and this baggage, but not knowing that. Not consciously it. knowing it's there. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, a big part of it is, you know, um, the the body is, it's the subconscious mind. Yeah. The body itself yeah. is your subconscious and it actually controls 95 to 97 or something ridiculous, you know, percent yeah. of, of our decision making on a daily basis, you know, and the conscious mind, it likes to think it's in control. It likes to think that, you know, it's top dog and, and knows everything and is making all the decisions. I, I use the term gut feeling, but it, it, it's basically just the body saying, I know, I know what I need. I know what I need. I can sense fear. I can sense something's not right. And it's almost primal, you know, when it goes back into the, that back of the head primal, um, you know, area of, of, you know, the sun goes down and and we're ready to hunt and, you know, um, and that's the thing, like you don't necessarily know because it's, it's all in the body subconscious. It's making all our decisions and, and it's almost, out of our control the the key is listening to it the key is actually getting out of your own conscious way and standing back and going okay let's actually listen to what this body is saying and what it's actually needing right now and I remember once I started processing you know um all of these emotions through somatic therapy and working with my therapist and actually going okay we're going to work on this this week and I want you to go into the body and I want you to start to feel and and picture and visualize this this circumstance that's causing so much anxiety and so much stress and whatnot um and once I started doing that and that shift started to happen and it wasn't until a few days after each session of breathing and breath work and that shaking feeling of releasing mm-hmm. and God knows what I was yeah. releasing at the time yeah. that I started to feel a change. And um, it was really fascinating when I, in that moment, in the moment when I kind of was told, okay, this is it for your mum. And I went, okay, that's horrible. Don't know how I'm going to deal with that but I know how I'm going to deal with the rest of my life. 
you know, um, it was like, it was like so much of the trauma that we had all gone through, like my family, my husband, my, my sisters, my dad, everyone, my auntie, you know, we're all holding and waiting. And then once that moment came, it was like, you know, that relaxation. And within about three weeks I lost, I think it was like 10 kilos of, of weight. Yeah. Um, and it purely came down to cortisol, you know, which yeah. is just so incredible. And it just shows that holding on to that amount of of uh, emotion, of stress, the stress hormones and, and what they do once they're released into the system as a form of protection, which we often get angry at and go, why is this happening? You know, why am I getting, gaining weight and I'm so angry at it? It's actually just your body's way of protecting you and to actually sit there and thank it for giving you the energy and the the fuel to get through, you know, moments of trauma, no, how, no matter how big or small they are. You're right. We just don't listen to our bodies. Mm. Enough. So say you've got a headache, right? I guess in this, in our society, we are kind of programmed to go and get a Panadol. Yeah. Get rid of the headache. Mm. Just get rid of it. Just get rid of it. Cause you've got to go to work. You've got to go to school. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. Mm. You don't have time for a headache. Mm. Get on with it. But that's, that's a warning sign that something is not right. You know, that's a little niggle that, hey, maybe you're dehydrated. That's that's probably the main thing. Yeah. <laughs> Your body's like, give me some water. But you're like, no, I'm just going to mask this. I'm going to put it put it aside and get on with life. Um, and, yeah, and I think it's something that I'm trying to be much more conscious of if you know if I do have even just like pain in my shoulder like I stop and I think to myself why do I have that pain in the shoulder yes I might have done something at yoga but what else I love uh Louise Hayes uh work I don't know if you yeah. yeah you love yeah brilliant and so I, I kind of do that you know look at it in that way and think okay so what what does the shoulder represent and yeah. you know, is there something else and um yeah, I, and I'm finding that to be fascinating. When I'm feeling rejection, for example, I tend to get hay fever symptoms. Wow. And wow. because and if and if you think if you think about hay fever, that's the sneezing, the coughing, it's all to Least. you know, reject, mm. reject, 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 mm. reject. And um it was through my Reiki practice that I discovered that, you know, I had this moment of like, oh, hang on. When did this first start? And when was the last time I got it? When did, you know, and now I start getting that hay fever, those hay fever symptoms. And I think, oh, hang on, where do I feel rejected? Um, and rather than go, oh, here's a tablet. Yeah. Sometimes I have to take the tablet yeah. as well because I need, I need to, I need to get on with Absolutely. life. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I sometimes like literally sit in front of a mirror and say, okay, you feel rejected because this happened and that happened but you haven't been rejected. It was just your perception, mm -hmm. but it, you know, and I talk myself through it and within a couple of days, guess what? I, all my symptoms are gone. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's incredible. It's incredible to, to just stop and look at, you know, why is your body doing what it's doing? Um, and I think making time to do that and connect with your body. Yeah. Um, I think that's, and and it's hard to do in like a, our busy society where it's just go go go. It is go go go. And I mean, it's so amazing that you actually have taken the time to put into yourself to actually figure out that those symptoms, which I can guarantee you, ninety nine percent of people are going to walk around and go, "Oh well, it's, it's windy." The pollen. <laughs> the pollen. Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. Um, and yeah. and to actually recognise, like, this is where it's yeah. coming from or this this is a c contributing factor to it, you know, and and to know how to listen to yourself because we all have so much power once we listen. It is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You kind of step into this new sense of self and going, oh, I'm not so afraid. Like, I was doing some work um with an osteo who also does somatic work as well. And it was just after my mum had passed and I was saying, oh, I've just got this pain. Like it's just this nagging pain like near my kidneys or my liver and it's just like really sore and really, really painful. And, you know, I've been 
pre-diagnosed with endometriosis and so all the doctors are like oh well it's just your endo it's not anything you know don't worry get the surgery you'll be right you know all of that um and she sort of brought to light you know how much anger can be processed and stored through the liver and just going oh and that just set me I just felt like I stepped into myself and that power you know, it, it was like I was in that control seat and just going, okay, now I know. Now look at what I can do to fix it, you know. Um, I guess with with your mum's passing, mm-hmm. you must have you must have had a lot of anger. Have you removed it from your body and how did you remove it from your body now, that anger? Yeah, so it's still it's still ongoing. Um and yeah, I think I mean it, I think it's for anyone who who loses someone in any way there is this sense of it's not fair, you know. Mm -hmm. There's this why did this have to happen to me and why did it have to happen to her and my family? And I look back and, I mean, I would do it in every lifetime, that experience. I would do it a million times over because it it gave me time with her and my family and it was just, you know, in some ways absolutely amazing. But... You walk away and there are days where I'm just, like, filled with rage, filled with anger, and I'm not someone, like, I'm just a born appeaser, you know, I'm, I'm keep everyone happy, don't show your emotions so everyone else is happy and then you're safe, like, that's, that's definitely who I am. Um, so your body's now storing that Yeah, anger. and it had for yeah. so many years. It was even before anything happened to my mum or mm-hmm. anything tragic or difficult I remember I found this really fascinating because this actually um came out when I was doing voice work in acting and I was really quiet and my voice coach said did anyone tell you when you were a kid shh stop being too loud shh sit down shut up (laughs) and I'm like yeah like all the time (laughs) all the time (laughs) all the bloody time and and she's like yeah and I was like whoa (laughs) and I kind of had that moment of like you know when you're sure you know as a child or sort of told you know don't cry or or don't you know feel or whatever it is you know you kind of go oh okay like you know and and your little brain can't really comprehend why they're telling you this and you're just like cool if I just if I sit still and I be quiet and I sit with my back straight you know and I make sure I'm on my best behavior and shove down any emotion that I'm possibly feeling you know um I'm gonna get that sticker and I'm gonna get that approval and I'm gonna get that certificate and I'm gonna have like happiness around me and everyone's gonna be proud and and it's just you know I, I had no idea until that moment that having some you know having a teacher or whoever it was as a kid just being like shh like sit down shut up you know stop yelling stop blah 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 or don't cry you know and how much that just sunk into my body and I just for some reason you're just conditioned to go yeah okay cool um and so you know I got to it's actually taken until this grieving process, which has been really transformative, to actually let out and recognise so much that has been not, I wouldn't say suppressed because it wasn't consciously suppressed or consciously shoved down. It was just that my body was holding it for so long, you know, um, and and it came out at first in a lot of the anger around the situation with, you know, the circumstances I've been through um, of why did this have to happen? Why is she gone? Why is this happening? Blah, 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 you know. And then I kind of had to change perspectives a little bit and kind of go, oh, okay, this goes deeper than just that issue and it goes deeper than that and it, and it's like, you know, it goes right back to childhood, you know, even just playing in the playground and, you know, um, and so releasing it has been a journey and there's still a lot left and some mm-hmm. days I still get that pain in my side and, yeah. um, you know, and I get a lot of jaw clenching and, and like a lot of grinding in my sleep and um, migraines and all these things and it can all be a sign of just like it's hope, it's just being held. And so for me um, yeah. grounding is huge. It's a huge tool that I use. Like I, uh, there are days where I feel this and I'm like, 
get my feet in the sand, like get my feet on the grass or on the dirt, just get in there and like just be and connect. Um, and then, you know, working with Sarah, my, my somatic therapist, who is like a mentor to me as well, who is just so, um, she's really opened my eyes and been so helpful in educating me through my own experience um, about the whole process and doing that embodiment work. And she'll pick up on something that, you know, I'm, I have no idea. I'm just talking nonstop. So I don't shut up now. Um, <laughs> which is fine. Um, <laughs> and she'll pick up on something and go, Oh, that's related to something that happened 20 years ago. And I'll go, Oh my God, you're right. And then yeah. she's like, right, we're going to work on that and kind of, you know, go through it in, in, in an embodiment process and really being in the body and listening to it. And the shaking comes out and the crying and the more anger. And she's taught me something which is so um, helpful is that we are taught as kids and throughout life that anger is such a bad emotion to have. You know, it goes back to that shh, don't cry, right? And it is, it's like it's actually such a healthy emotion. It is such a healthy yes. thing to go through and to experience because, you know, we all, I think in this world that we're in, everything's about comfort. Everything's about mm -hmm. happiness. It's about comfort. It's about anything that's easy. You know, everything you do every day has to be comfortable. It has to be easy, accessible. I think sometimes we forget that the full range of the human experience is hardship and if yeah. they, and, and feeling and everything it, if you didn't have the anger and the grief and the frustration and the sorrow and sadness and all those horrible emotions that feel extremely uncomfortable how are we like we aren't living we aren't experiencing anything you know um and so yeah like when I feel that liver pain or just the back pain or migraines or jaw tension or anything you know I kind of just sit back and thank I've, I've come to terms of just sort of thanking my body over fighting it yeah. you know because I'm like well thanks for yeah. giving me this experience of living you know because we only yeah. have a certain amount of time here and I want to experience absolutely everything I possibly can in this body and I think that's just such a it's a gift. It's a really wonderful thing. And so tell me what's life like for you now? So after the moment. Yeah, it's changed a lot. And I think it's um, it's going really well. Um, so, yeah, I've almost finished um, studying somatotherapy and I'm starting to work with clients, which I'm really, really excited about. And it's really fulfilling and beautiful and I'm a huge fan of storytelling, so hearing anyone's story, I just get so excited about. Um, since that moment, it's been a bit of a journey to get to this point, and that moment was only eight months ago, so there is still quite wow. quite a while <laughs> left to kind yeah. of experience, you know. Um, but it's sort of finding my new normal, and for the first time in my life, I feel like, oh, okay, I'm here. And I don't know if it's got to do with the experience or if it's got to do with my age when you get to your late 20s and you start to go find yourself a little bit more and and all of that but for whatever reason um yeah things are things are starting to feel like for the first time okay I'm, I'm standing exactly where I'm meant to be and I know myself so it's been yeah it's been wonderful it's been difficult it's been horrible it's been <laughs> hilarious and <laughs> fantastic and all the things so um yeah yeah I'm really I'm really loving it um even through the the terrible moments well it, it seems like you've done so much in eight months um you know um de like dealing with your grief and then also moving forward because you know sometimes we can get stuck in our grief and just not be able to to move past mm -hmm. it and you know I'm I know many people that have um and and like grief, whether it's the loss of a loved one or loss of a job, we can grieve for so many different reasons. And I think sometimes, yeah, I know I myself have, you know, got stuck in grief for many years after losing one of my dogs. And 
and a lot of people think that I'm no. crazy because I I was get, I know you're a dog mom so you you'll get it you'll Any get it animal <laughs> I remember I lost a fish when I was a kid and I was like it wasn't even my fish I think it was my sister and that just threw me. I get it, uh, it there is no yeah. justification around grief That's yeah the thing. yeah it's it's inspiring that you've you know you're you haven't stayed in your grief, especially as, you know, listening to your mum's story, um, it feels like from the outside looking in that there were so many ups and downs and and perhaps so many times where you kind of went, ah, we got this. She's fine. And, you know, and then and then bam, something else comes at you. So that must have been like such an an emotional roller coaster. Yeah. Um, there was there was a lot of up and down. It was big. Uh, I just know. I think I think I look at it from this perspective that I was lucky. Um, I can't speak for the rest of my family and how they feel about it. Um, but mm-hmm. for me, I feel that I was the lucky one because I had the opportunity to start grieving while she was still here. And not many people get that opportunity, you know. I've had friends that have had people taken from them within seconds, you know, and it's just you're completely unprepared for it. And I think that gut feeling I had from the minute she went in with the, you know, came out with a brain tumour or whatever it was going, this could be it. And my brain going, no, we don't want it to be, but my gut going, prepare yourself was a real blessing you know listening I should have listened to my body a lot more it's just in those moments it's so difficult to to let it in yeah um so I have to look back and go it's actually a blessing because I got that time with her and I got I got to say what I need to say and and I if it weren't for that experience you know I wouldn't be here now and and I also look at what she needed in that time and I'm so determined to try and give that to other people. And I think that's what's keeping me going and that's what's keeping me grounded. Um, and I'm also, she always, you know, towards the end, something she said a lot to me was you have to embrace life. You have to, you have to, you have to. And so like, just go and live, go and live, go and live. And because yeah. I think she knew as well in some ways, you know, and especially being paralyzed you're not Mm. you're not living you know she was definitely not living in that last year of her life which is just so unfair in so many ways but you know you gotta you gotta take it in your stride and um I guess yeah I the the thing that I that keeps me going and helps me move forward is just knowing that I mean while she was in the hospital last year and all of that that to me felt oh, that was like the worst. The depression was horrific and the anxiety and the stress and the the panic attacks and all these things. And I look at it and it was all based on fear of losing her. And then I go, I look back on it and I just went, well, um, yeah, like that to me was part of the grief and that's when it sort of started. And, And how lucky am I that I got the opportunity to go through that with her, you know, and and that's honestly what just keeps me moving on and that's just what keeps me going. That's that's an amazing perspective. I, I guess that just shows your strength. Yeah, I mean, there are definitely times where I, I don't consider myself strong at all. I kind of just go, okay, yeah. you, well, you dealt with this, you got to do it now, don't you? Like, yeah. you just kind of like, you're in it. Well, that's that. <laughs> I don't think, I mean, I have my weak moments still, you know, and I think anyone... You're human. You're human, you know, it's just what yeah. happens and it's not anything yeah. to be ashamed of and it's not anything to feel afraid of either and to mm-hmm. know, like, I just know I'm not alone in this. I'm not the only one who's lost someone. We Like, yeah. I was, you know, watching a TED Talk earlier and, and, and she was saying, you know, the stats are pretty high considering that anyone you know is going to die one day like and it's just like well yeah (laughs) like you know I'm not the only one sitting here who's gone through it and to be honest it's like you know I look at my my sisters and my family and they're all coping in their own ways and doing an amazing job um and I just look at and go well look we've got roofs over our heads we've got you know jobs we've got each other we've we've we live in a fantastic part of the world and I just go well, what's stopping us 
you know, from living and moving forward because you got to count your blessings, you got to count where you are and what, what life has given you. And, yeah, I don't think some days I'm not strong and that's okay. Has this experience with your mum changed your view on death and dying? Yeah, completely. I've always sort of believed in that the soul keeps living. This is just my personal view I think that we should sort of get rid of our physical shed our physical body when the time comes but we keep living um and I honestly do believe that's the case I'm not afraid of it like I once was I feel her around me all the time um she flickers the lights drives me bloody nuts um <laughs> she always said she'd do that too which was funny <laughs> she's like yeah That's I'll good. keep you That's up good. and I'm like all right <laughs> um you know and so I feel extremely connected to her I talk to her all the time and I think it's just it's just a part of life it's not the end it's just the next phase that's why I the next that's phase. how I see mm-hmm. it it's just a transition to the next phase of life and I it's also made me look at it from the perspective that this physical life that we are in is is the hardest life we live because it's mm-hmm. the one that teaches us all those really hard truths and lessons and you know we're faced with really difficult things and it's heartbreaking and horrible and all the things that can be really scary and I know that it teaches you all the lessons you need to go into that next phase that's kind of where I'm sitting with it and what I view of that yeah I'm I'm with you on that yes that's that's my perspective too yeah yeah definitely yeah so you got to make the most of it while we're here right (laughs) absolutely absolutely and you know live a live a life that is is true to you and not living a life for other people, yeah. whether that's your your partner, your parents. I think that's, yeah, super important. What kind of, like, words of wisdom would you give to, you know, someone going through maybe something similar at the moment? Honestly, as hard as it is, there are going to be days where you have to put yourself first. Um, that's something that I wish I did more of you know it's Mm -hmm. back to the idea of putting your own oxygen mask on before the child's when the plane's going down um and we forget that without being present within ourselves and caring for ourselves we are you know unable to care for others and that was the the biggest thing for me was learning how to do that and there are days where you feel just so guilty And when you're faced with caring for someone going through an illness and who is unable to take care of themselves, you go into the fight mode of just do it. You just got to go and, you know, put your needs aside for them. Um, I think the other biggest thing is in those quiet moments or in the quiet of the night have that time for you to recharge and have that time to give back to yourself and be present in your body and connect to yourself because you know we can't we can't control anything else we just can't no and once we accept that it gets a whole lot easier you know um and that you can do it because if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> I, I didn't think I could, you know, do anything like that. And you, you, you're faced with things, and you just surprise yourself. It's kind of wonderful, yeah. and, and we can, we, we can, we are all so capable of doing such wonderful things. Um, yeah. So as long as you have that, give that time to yourself, and it's not being selfish. It's just caring for others, in a way, which is um, really important. That's great advice. If there was one word that you would like to be remembered by, what would that word be? <sighs> Say the first one that comes to your mind. Empathy. Yeah. Yeah, I think there is something really beautiful in, like I, I find myself drawn to people who show empathy, have the ability to show or recognize it's hard 
empathy or compassion because um, I've learned a lot from the people in my life who are able to show those two things or show compassion or empathy because um, it, it comes from a genuine place and it comes purely from um, not putting any ounce of your own needs into that giving you know there's no expectation to get anything back yes there is just a a compliment that is completely whole based on that other person or an act that is completely selfless and and I think if the world were able to do a little bit more of that you know even if it was just one tiny thing a week from one you know every person that you know was able to I do think we'd see a really big difference um but I only can hope that I'm able to be that kind of person like those that I've encountered who have had that kind of impact for me. So that's that's something I would, yeah, like to one day be remembered by, hopefully. Um, thank you so much for uh, today and for sharing your story and your mum's story. And I feel truly honoured, you know, I think um, – I am so lucky that my mum is still around and, you know, when I heard about your your story, I couldn't help but put myself in that situation thinking, oh, my God, I, what? Mm-hmm. No, like that would be, that to me is like my biggest nightmare. And to to listen to how you didn't just stand by your mum's side through it all, you actually got in there, got your hands and um, gave it everything gave her everything that you had I think that's that's truly special and um yeah I'm gonna cry now Uh, (laughs) it's just uh yeah it's really special and I think um you know I'm, I'm sure she's so proud of everything that you're doing because um I mean how could she not and I think the way that you've turned the the pain and you know found such an amazing purpose um I think it's the gift that you're going to give to everyone is just going to be incredible so thank you thank you for being here thank you this is just I feel so incredibly honored because I think you're one of those people who you have that compassion you have that empathy and it's it's a rare thing to come across and it's it's when you find people like that I just I mean I just want to hold on to you and be like stay (laughs) stay in my life (laughs) <laughs> just amazing. Um, but no, I mean, that's the thing. I, I don't feel like I've really done anything too special. I think I'm just someone who has just been faced with something that's been difficult and I'm just trying my absolute best to take it in my stride and do well. And if it weren't for the, like, the strength of my family, my sisters, my dad, my auntie, my mum, my husband, these are the people that I look up to the most because they, they did it alongside me and um you know it just yeah it's it's just we're just people and it happens to everyone you know someone at some point everyone's going to go through something of losing a parent or you know it may be completely different and hopefully far more graceful and peaceful circumstances um but anyone can handle it and yeah like it's it's just yeah it's an absolute honor to be here and to like be able to just you know hopefully someone out there who might be going through something else you've given them that opportunity today to to listen and to feel just like they're not alone in doing it because I think when I was going through it like all I wanted to hear was who else has done this (laughs) anyone here know what to do (laughs) someone tell me someone oh anyone else done this before because I'm new here like this is you know (laughs) Um, so yeah, it's just, you are, you're you're bringing so many stories to light from all over the world and, and stories are what honestly makes the world go round. It is the most important thing in the world, like in my opinion, um, cause that's what connects us. So you're you're just, thank you so much. You're absolutely wonderful. And I'm so grateful. Thank you. Um, well, thank you so much for, for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening. I hope today's conversation inspires and empowers you to know that no matter your current situation, your life can change too. All it takes is a moment. And if you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and share it with a friend. If you would like to share your own moment, see the link in the show notes. Until next time, 
Be present in each moment because you never know when your moment will arrive or when you have the gift of being a moment for someone else. Take care.